Okay, let's now start digging into how uh, memory locators work. Okay, let's let's start with the assumptions uh, made in this lecture. Okay, so first of all, uh, memory is word addressed. Okay, so each so each word you know each word can hold a pointer, and a block size. The allocator of free block size is going to be uh, a size that's multiple of words. Okay, for example, if, if here we have our heap. So we'll have, for example, we have an allocated block here that happens to be four words, and we have a free block here that happens to be two words, and so on. Okay, another free block here, and so on. And this, this is a free block, and this is an allocated block. Okay? So let me give you an example. Okay, so that's the order we're going to make these calls. First, when we call uh, malloc, this is our heap. Okay, this is our heap. And then when malloc says, I want a block of size four, we're going to allocate four words. Okay. Now, now you could say allocate five, I'm going to look at another five words. Um, and if I like allocate six, another six words. Then now we're going to free P2 and note that we're passing as a parameter a pointer that was earlier returned by malloc. Okay, so that's, so when we do that, this block is now free. Now we have some holes in our heap. And then when I allocate two, we have two options, could go there, there, we just chose it to allocate it here, and so on. One important question here is that when we were implementing this allocator, what information, what information does it need to keep track of? Well, it needs to keep track of where the heap is, where it starts, right, and where it ends, so what is the size of the heap. And um, it also keeps, it needs to keep track of what, are, what parts of the, the, the heap are allocated, like this allocated, allocated, and allocated, and what part is free. Okay. And also it needs a data structure to, in order to find blocks we need to allocate it, and you need to also be able to um, know what, what parts, of course, know what parts of the heap are free, so you allocate it there and so on. Okay. That's what kind of constraints allocators have. So first, from the application point of view, uh, it can issue an arbitrary sequence of mallocs and free requests. Okay? So, and free requests must be made only to a previous malloc block. I've said this two or three times already because it's actually really important. And um, allocators, from the allocator point of view, the first thing that's important to know is that they really can't control the number or size of allocated blocks. This is something that the application does. The application does the requests, and the allocator just serves those requests. So it doesn't really know what the application is going to need in the future. Okay? And we wanted to be able to respond immediately to malloc requests. Okay? So um, in other words, it cannot reorder or buffer requests. So it's a synchronous call when you call malloc when it returns, it has to have done the job. It can't just reorder them. It has to re respond immediately, right? They have to be, so otherwise it creates a, a, a big problem. Of course, we only want to allocate uh, blocks from free memory. If you allocate blocks from allocated memory, it's going to be a big mess. You're going to be overriding data from the application. That, that is not going to be a good thing for sure. You're going to create bugs and hard to find and so on. So blocks can't, cannot overlap. So, uh, and also, it has to align blocks. And by alignment, it means that the pointers, the beginning of the block, has to be a multiple of a certain number, okay? For example, uh, the GNU malloc library allocates uh, blocks in an 8-byte granularity, okay? So this is just satisfy a bunch of alignment requirements, okay? And, of course, once an allocated block has been allocated, it cannot move, okay? So in other words, compaction is not allowed. Why? Well, imagine the following. You call malloc, you get a pointer, and now you assume that the data is in that pointer, and then the allocator just moves it around. If you don't update the pointer, then you're going to be pointing to stale data, and that's going to be, again, a big mess. Okay? So allocators have to follow a very strict discipline. And now, from a performance point of view, um, there's two components. The first one is throughput, okay? and that means the following. Given a sequence of uh, malloc, and free requests, the goal is to maximize throughput. Okay, so the goal is to maximize that. And the, the other component, by the way, of, of performance is, is a peak memory utilization. We want to use memory, we want to have as few holes as possible. We want to use as much memory as possible. Okay? So, and these goals are often, con is, is often conflicting because if you want to maximize throughput, you want to do things very, very fast. Therefore, you can't afford to do very sophisticated, do a lot of work in managing memory to increase 
uh, peak utilization. So uh, in the throughput here is the number of completed requests per unit time. For example, you want to do 5,000 mallocs and 5,000 free calls in 10 seconds. That's throughput. That, and what we're doing here is it will be a total of 10, uh, uh, a total of 1,000 operations per second because we had 10,000 operations and in 10 seconds, 1,000 operations per second. The other performance goal of allocators is peak memory utilization. Okay, let me tell you what it is now. So uh, again, we have our sequence of uh, requests from R0 to Rn minus 1. And uh, the aggregate payload, PK, is um, the total useful memory provided by the malloc blocks. Okay, so uh, the, that's the payload P of a malloc block is the number of bytes requested by the application. Okay? So say the aggregate uh, payload PK uh, is the total, by the total number of bytes uh, that malloc provided, bytes requested by the application at request RK. Okay. And now we define uh, the heap size, the current heap size as HK, and it's, mon it's monotonically non-decreasing, means it only grows as we need more heap space. Okay. And this is done with a system called S-break, as I mentioned before. And now, now that we know we, we define the current heap size and the aggregate payload, okay, which is the, the aggregate number of useful bytes uh, in, a, in a sequence of malloc and free requests, what we want to do is define peak memory utilization as the maximum of the payload up to request k, right? That's the peak memory utilization at the moment when you call um, a certain request here, rk, okay? And uh, so the pigment memory utilization is the fraction of the heap that was useful in the past. Okay? Remember that the heap never decreases, so that's why we look, we, we're using max. Okay? So the pigment memory utilization is the maximum aggregate payload divided by the size of the heap. Okay? And the goal is to actually maximize this number. We want to make uh, the heap as useful as possible, whatever we allocate in the heap as useful as possible. Okay? Why this is hard? This is hard because of something called fragmentation. It's all the holes that appear in our heap. Okay? And by the way, managing that has an effect on throughput because it has overheads. It takes work by the memory allocator to, to provide that. So let's see what, what fragmentation is now. There's two types of fragmentation, internal fragmentation and external fragmentation. And internal fragmentation is uh, the fragmentation within a block. And the reason we have that is that this is, for example, here's our block. Okay? And the actual payload is just a, a part of this block. The payload, that's, what, that's what's useful to the application. And it's smaller than the block size. Okay? So all of these parts here that are not useful, these are, they are the source of internal uh, fragmentation. Okay? So, and this is caused by overhead of maintaining, uh, space overhead of maintaining the heap data structures. Like, you know, things like markers, whether the block is free or not, pointers among the blocks, and so on. Also, the padding for alignment purposes. We just said earlier that one of the requirements of dynamic memory allocators is that they need to provide um, aligned blocks. Okay? And also, uh, this uh, internal fragmentation is caused by, by explicit policy decisions. Okay? So you could return a big block to satisfy a small request. Why would you do that? Because of performance reasons. Okay? So, um, and one interesting thing about internal fragmentation is that it depends only on the pattern of previous requests, so it's easy to measure. Okay? So now what's external fragmentation? Well, it's external because it's external to the block. So that means that it's, it occurs when there's enough aggregate heap memory, but no single uh, free block that's large enough. So let me give you an example here. So suppose that we had this sequence of mallocs here, and then we had the free, so we have, you know, five free here and two free here, if I, if I allocate six, I'm not going to do that. So what happens? So actually I have five free here and I have two free here, so I have a total of seven free, but none of them are large enough to honor uh, this, this request of six. So what will happen now? Well, nothing we can. So, and by the way, this is actually dependent on the pattern of future requests, so it's actually difficult to measure whether external fragmentation is a problem or not. See you soon.